Hello and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. My name's Amy, aka Warp Fiends, and today I am joined by... Hello, I'm Luke, aka Samime. And today we're talking about two new faction focuses for Age of Sigmar 4.0. We have Zinch and we have Ogres. Ogres, yes. So, yeah, interesting. Like, they haven't kept to any kind of um, uh, pattern while releasing these. They seem to be fairly much at random at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought, like, potentially we are going to get maybe two Chaos ones, because obviously Order and Chaos mm. are, like, the two factions with the highest amount of uh, different armies in, but... Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> this is Chaos and Destruction. Oh, well. Well, we have some, again, some uh, really nice artwork for the Mathorot and some yeah. uh, catch up on the lore. It's another one. Yeah, lovely really cool. pictures of battles between Zeechin and Nurgle forces there. And... Yep, yep. Uh, mm. That was that was particularly cool, yeah. Um, but first up, obviously, we have the battle traits. And uh, there's the main kind of. Uh, Destiny dice mechanic has stayed fairly yeah. similar. Yeah, I'm I've not been... entirely sure of the specifics of the current edition. I feel that is fairly much unchanged. Again, like I don't play disciples, so I'm not a hundred percent on the rules. But from mm. everything I understand, those destiny dice seem fairly much the way they are now. Yeah, it limits to these type of roles, so you can't do it on like character abilities or anything like that that might be affecting you that you have to roll on. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that was included currently. Do not um, play each. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's a it's a good mechanic. Like, um, just if yeah, you, if you roll fairly hot near the start of the game, you've got like a decent. Well, then again, now. Nowadays, you you don't even need to like keep a one on hand for a bravery check or anything, do you? It's uh, exactly so yeah, you're just so hoping to get all high thing. numbers. Like. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, destiny dice is just kind of one of the key mechanics that I think has been with disciples of each since the first um, yeah. the the first edition of AOS. Very flavorful for Zinch. Mhm. Mm so. Uh, it's good be interesting to see because i think they do have some mechanics with like various kind of like command ability uh command traits where they can potentially restock their uh, destiny pool yes i think it'd be interesting to see whether that, that survives yeah. or not like mm -hmm. um yeah the other three battle traits in involve like the state of being on fire <laughs> <laughs> So you have the three, the, the once per turn army, pick an enemy unit that had any damage points allocated to it by a weird flame spell or shooting attacks with weird flame. And they have the burning keyboard. Um, mm. Keyboard? Keyword. Um, <laughs> My keyboard's on fire. <laughs> and yeah, so obviously like you'll be picking a unit every turn because you yeah. will be firing with weird flame with Zinch. Oh, so it's, it's nice the way it's worded that like you don't have to pick it before you shoot at the unit. It's just like you pick a unit that has actually taken the damage. Yes. yes it, it could be exactly. like a, a once per turn thing. Pick the unit and then if you get damage, they get the effects on them, which you might not be able to get anything through on that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then the, the second part of that is this uh, once per turn at the end of the turn, roll a d3 for each burning enemy unit, and it's the same uh, on a two to three, inflict an amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. On a one, they're no longer burning. Yeah, yeah, they can essentially this, put themselves out. Like Yeah, this d3 seems to be a standard um, kind of wound yeah. roll that we've seen a lot across a lot of stuff in the new edition. A lot of abilities were spiraling out of control for mortal wounds in third edition i feel and they've definitely mm. kind of pulled everything back to being this like very much d3 role for it now absolutely um yeah which can as we're going to see in the next article yeah, yeah. um negatively impact people yeah. uh but yeah the last part of this sorry go on Interesting as well, though, because it is like once per turn, any shooting phase. So that choosing the enemy unit you've done damage to can also be for you shooting in the enemy shooting phase. Yes, 
yeah. So, so potentially you can have like that. two units on fire by the end of the first battle round, or exactly, yeah. Um, so that could be fun. Um, the final part of it is the passive that if a burning enemy unit uh, uses an ability that would heal it, instead mm -hmm. of healing, it just takes off the burning, which yeah, is yeah. like, you know, an enemy might want to like put all their heals into actually like fixing the wounds after they've gone out or something. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like yeah. you could you, you could use the rally command essentially on a unit that's got burnt on it to try and take that off them, save any more damage going through. Yes, yes. Um, so, I mean, it seems fun. It's not hugely powerful, but it's a nice little kind of, you know, just like picking away at um, the enemy over multiple yeah, turns yeah. as you keep on blasting them with flame. Um, yeah. Uh, also, like the battle formations next. So the weird flame host obviously centers around flamers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um subtract one from wound rolls for attacks made by burning enemy units so that, that could be fairly that could be all right really like since yeah. units aren't exactly the strongest survivable units in the world so like making them minus one to wound against things exactly uh, yeah zinch stuff do tend to like across the board rely on their invulnerable saves uh their ward saves rather um but yeah, just giving them that extra like minus one to wound on it is a nice little buff for them. Again, like none of these battle formation things so far have been like absolutely kind of game breaking sounding things, but yeah, some have definitely sounded be... a lot better than others. And mm. I think that I think that is like fairly like mid to high. On yeah, that. yeah. You've still got to do something for it to come into effect, but it's. Exactly. It's a good effect it, if it goes off. It builds on like your basic kind of army power that's working in the background, and uh, actually like gives it a bit of a, a buff to. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got the classic spell about uh, transform to spawn. It's called mm. now. Um, and it's just basically a, a seven casting roll. Yep. Inflict D3 mortal damage. If any models are slain, pick a reserve Chaos Born of Zinch. Um, yes, because this this is a huge mm -hmm. point that they use this spell exactly to showcase off. Is there are no free summonings in Fourth Edition now? Yes. Like what you have in your army is what you have in your army. There's no bringing out extra Lords of Changes like in turn one or turn two from casting spells or anything. It's like exactly yes the most you can do is bring units back again using summoning laws i like um, the idea of it it's definitely like for people that have already like spent the money to get loads and loads of extra things for their army it's it's a very big downfall for them because but then again they've got more things to play around with to make a different army composition but yeah. At the same time, someone kind of new to the army, it's making the army a lot more affordable, but you don't need to buy so much. Yes, yeah. And you can see here, like, um, it, the Chaos Spawn's uh, passive ability is just you can replace it any number of times, um, whereas presumably other kind of demons and stuff like that are going to have a limited number of yeah, times. Yeah, can... it's going to be interesting with, like, the the smaller demons i I'm actually i'm gonna read again on the pink horror when we get down to it but uh yeah yeah um keros fate weaver so the big boy you can see he's got a hefty 16 health which is um one of the highest ones we've seen mm. other than maybe nagash i can't remember what yeah yeah i think nagash had like 18 or something 18, didn't he? yeah He's uh, he's gone down in his save characteristic because currently he's a four up save, but he has gained mm. a five up ward by the looks of it. Which yes, uh, he's a save to ward three. ratio. Um, and he has uh, this mastery magic. I don't know how this compares to his current. Oh, he spell, he's, but... he has this currently. I think all Lords of Change have this uh, ability on them. It's right. very very good for casting. It's. Yes, you can change the lowest D6 to match the highest D6. And then his passive ability as well, he adds one to casting rolls for all friendly disciples of Zinch wizards while they're holy within 12 of him, so yeah, he, so... Can, he can cast a 13 
on his spells on a 2d6, essentially. It does seem like um, kind of a, a solid base for building like a, a magic heavy faction on top of those two yeah. rules. Um, yeah, again, I don't know what the current ones are like, so I couldn't uh, really say, but... So currently, I think, like, what we're going to go down to the horrors, like, currently most, like, big zinch lists are just like kind of Kairos, maybe like another Lord of Change. Mm. They're there just behind a solid brick of pink horrors, just doing their, throwing their spells out, out everywhere and just trying to make it as hard as possible for the enemy to get to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, I love uh, this once per battle one. That, that's a really nice flavorable ability for it. Yeah, so if you you declare the tactical gambit ability and you can pick one of the following effects to uh, pick one battle tactic that you've already attempted or pick two battle tactics um, that you've not yet attempted, but you can only actually get the points for one of them, but you get yeah, to try for both of them and see, see which one. I think one. there's five universal ones isn't there and then there's two in the general's handbook that are exclusively for chaos factions yes so essentially you have got two spare Mm -hmm. in each game so uh, this again we don't know what the other chaos one is but um wasn't the chaos one we saw was like you had to just kill an enemy unit that was on an objective you don't control or something or it was something like that. I seem to remember that was one of the ones that had a few weird stipulations. Yeah, I think so, on like it. a couple of more hoops you had to jump for. I think it was like you had to charge two units and kill Charging a unit that was on an units, objective. Kill a unit and be controlling an objective at the end of the turn, I believe. Yeah. Which, again, like if you're using that ability and you've got that, you might mm-hmm. go, well, I'll choose that one because I might not be able to do it. But then I've got this other one that's also kind of like I might be able to do that, and then you've also you've always got the choice then which one you actually choose to score the points for. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, also, he has the spell Arcane Suggestion, so on an eight, um, you pick an enemy unit within eighteen inches, um, and either they cannot use commands, they subtract one from hit rolls and wound rolls. Mm. Um, <laughs> or subtract one from save rolls. So that seems a pretty solid spell. I think people's problem with this at the minute is I think this is like a universal spell currently for Disciples right. of Zeech, whereas now it's become a, a war Kairos scroll only, only spell for Kairos. Hmm. I mean, yeah, you can kind of see like one with kind of multiple outcomes they'd want to probably keep for like the the bigger character maybe. Mm. So it's, uh, it's a reason to put him in the army, and he's definitely going to be able to cast it quite easily. Yes, yes, and eight's not going to be any trouble for him, I shouldn't think. <laughs> um, yeah, next up we have the Gaunt Summoner. So uh, you can see, he's a, I thought it's fairly nice, like it could put out a fair bit of ranged damage with the change. Yeah, that's, that's all right. He's got criticals as well to do like D3 mortal wound, uh, mortal damage on the hit roll of a six. Yeah, yeah. Now it's all, all his right, stuff, all, all right, his stu- this is, this is, all his stuff is basically like, um, it's all it, to do with the crystal towers, isn't it? Yeah, the, unlocking uh, deep strike basically for all. this army. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure, like. Seems to be a few armies that can use deep strike like mechanics. We've seen mm. uh, Zinch only if you bring a Gaunt Summoner. Uh, obviously, Stormcast have it and um, Caradron have it. Yeah, I'm starting yeah. to think that maybe, just maybe, some of these deep strike rules should have just been core rules yeah. rather than repeat yeah. them over and just say this faction has action access to this, maybe. It- it's a weird one because, yeah, at the end of the day, is it GW just trying to sell a model to mm. unlock that rule in your army? It's like, <laughs> yes, yeah, I can see that. But yeah, it's all just basic, like, um, declare a friendly unit uh, to be set up in reserves, uh, pick them to be set up on the battlefield, 
And then there's got a spell that makes it so they can be set up closer. Yeah, yeah, and that's interesting. But it's seven, more than seven inches from enemy units, so Ooh, it sets them up crackle. for a nice charge. Is it still on? It's gone now. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, more than seven inches away from enemy units, that's, you know, that's... It's respectable. It's like an average charge roll, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, especially um, if you're using other tricks and stuff like that. Also, yeah, you've also got your um, destiny dice as well to exactly, throw a six exactly. in there. It's... Mm-hmm. Um, now, Kirstlings, I didn't actually realise they changed this in the law. So a Kirstling is now, there's lots of them, whereas mm. the Kirstling was a specific character beforehand. Yeah, yeah, I think... Um... I think uh, it's been quite a topic recently. Like, I think people just asking, like, um, on Facebook comments and things, like, "Oh, I thought it was unique and stuff." And it's like, no, yeah. no, no, you can but, buy more if you want to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> like, they particularly added this when they they released the new sculpt, anyway, because mm. uh, before then it was it was the curse link. <laughs> um, I, say, I, I do love that model. It's like. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got D6 hits, which, you know, obviously, like, a, on a dice roll, your number of hits could go either way. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's one of the only mortal the things flame. to have the weird flame ability from what they kind of mention in between the article mm. bits, I think. So, I mean, I really like, he's got this abil- um, spell here that can add one to his rend and damage characteristics, yeah. 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 Um, Although... Yeah, it's good, but he's still not... I mean, he does look like he can potentially do some damage in melee, but fours and fours is a bit... Yeah, yeah, he's, it's a little underwhelming, I think, for what I mean, he wants I, to I think he's but... kind of struggling with his little, like, guado on him. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do really need to see how a lot of this stuff actually plays on the tabletop, mm. because... Uh, yeah, considering there is a lot of stuff that they have scaled down in kind of strength, and they did warn us about that uh, mm. beforehand. We've got to see how this is actually going to play. Oh, yeah, is yeah, this yeah. going to be a decent kind of mid-level hero on the battlefield, or is yeah. it going to be like a waste of time, basically? Well, he's got a good save characteristic for a Zinch thing mm. anyway, so he's probably going to be able to stick around a little longer than some of the other foot heroes. Yeah. And- that distributor, um, disruptor of arcane, is I was about a to really say, nice sounding thing. This is this is my favourite bit of the whole war scroll. Where it's just uh, each time it unbinds a spell, roll a dice on a four plus, subtract one from the power level of the enemy wizard that used that spell to a minimum of zero. So, so you can basically it, just stop them from getting off any more spells. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mm-hmm. think weirdly at the minute he's got like an ability where he can <coughs> essentially steal the spell that an enemy tries to cast if he unbinds it and and then I think uh, can... yes i think i had uh, seen that one before but this this one definitely seems a lot easier to keep track of than trying to like look at what your yeah, opponent's spells yeah. are to, like... <laughs> i mean i think in terms of the way they're simplifying the addition this makes a lot of sense to me just stop your opponent getting off another spell if they, they've only got one so, more if they're an army that's not hugely about wizards but a wizard can grant a decent buff and that wizard's only like a one mm-hmm. on his uh, power level like that's huge it's like just yep, completely yep. stopping from casting a spell that turn it's like especially since you can then use destiny dice to make sure you uh, oh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh, I will definitely unbind, unbind it, you yes, with my but... destiny dice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you still have to roll the four up after the unbind, yeah, so yeah. that's a bit of chance in yeah. there. Mm-hmm. So, pink horrors then. Yeah, the yeah, horrors of a huge change on them. Yeah, so instead of like creating new blue horrors, um, you can choose when a pink horror die. Either they split... And you can return up to two blue horrors to a friendly blue horror and brimstone horror unit, which is one unit, uh, within 12 inches. So you have to keep them close together, basically. Um, And the other one you can choose is just pick an enemy unit in combat with you uh, on a four plus, inflict one mortal damage. So 
just the blue horrors get their attacks up and die instantly. You can mm. assume by that one. It's um, it's definitely different. It, it goes into what we were just what we were saying earlier about it's just kind of like it's not making you have to go out and buy like a ridiculous amount of blue and brimstone horrors. If you've already yeah. got all those blue and brimstone horrors, it's uh, it's really bad for you, really. But it's always been a sticking point, even back yeah. since like the early days of Warhammer. That like, okay, you've got this unit of pink horrors that you've got to buy all of them, and they were always like the lead models, so they were never like cheap or oh, like yeah, a yeah. plastic pack back in the day. And so you have to buy, all and then you have to buy double the amount of blue horrors as that, and you have to keep track of it all. And yeah. Uh, I do like this. You just have two units, basically. Mm. You have your pink horrors and your blue and brimstone horrors, and it all gets sorted out between each other. Yeah, I mean, there's like still the ability there for like having your pinks and your blues as your screens. If like you still want to play blues and pinks as screens for stuff, mm -hmm. and it essentially have your blues in front to take the damage and then hope that the pinks kind of die to restore the blues and yeah there's a lot of different ways you can play around with this i feel so um... it's it's definitely like i mean i've seen uh battle reports and things at the minute where people are taking like you know 30 odd blob squads of pink horrors and then mm -hmm. they separate out <laughs> and then they separate out and it's just oh, like god there's just nothing to remove that many wounds in the game. Really. Yeah, it's like... yeah. Yes, exponential growth is not something you really want to be mm. uh, handling on the tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I do feel for people that I've already got the amount of blues and brimstones they need for pinks, but I say... Yes. It's one of those things you just have to maybe look at fielding units of blues now. And... Yeah, yeah, could be. It depends. Uh, depends Another... very much on what the whole army looks like. Mm -hmm. I said there might be there might be something better to screen with now or something or like you. Mm -hmm. We don't know from the we don't know the full wall sc war scrolls yet. Yeah. So the spearhead version, you still have the destiny dice. Um, still exactly the same, more or less. I believe there's less things there, but I'm not sure. Hold on, that's a casting run, charge, hit, wound, save. What was it on the other one? So I know some of the other stuff is uh, missing from spearhead mode. Mm, banishment rolls. Hit, cause... wound, charge, run, banishment, on by Yes, yeah, yeah, so it's stuff you can't yeah, really use. It's not the full-on magic uh module is it so there is a casting still yeah but there's not yeah. the chance to unbind and spear. Mm -hmm. so that's interesting yeah um we see the Karak acolytes here and they've got this uh gestalt sorcery ability in the shooting phase which is just make a casting roll on a six add one to their sorceress bolts hmm. uh, it's fairly yeah it's fairly much what they got now i think Onto the range of the bolts, rather. Yeah, so uh, they seem like basic troops. Uh, not a great deal going on there, but um, yeah, I think five up, ups. But... Five ups, probably what I'd kind of expect for people that are just going into battle with like no shirts or anything on. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I do, I do really appreciate in this edition that every unit just has like a unique ability on it uh, particularly mm -hmm. in spearhead that just gives them a little bit of flavor of what they actually are mm -hmm. without it just going down to pure like stat lines on everything interesting i wonder if anything has like recursion or anything in that zinch spearhead box mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously like you we haven't seen like zangor's uh, war scrolls or anything i mean they might be they might end up being better than these acolytes. Yeah, yeah. Be interesting to see. Um, moving on, today we've just seen the Ogre Moor tribes. Mm. So, big hungry boys. Yeah, there's <laughs> been uh, 
think there's been a fair bit of hoo-ha about the Ogres because they definitely have seen the rough end of the Nerf Hammer, I think, going into yes. this edition with the... I have it's... seen some of the comments today have been uh, less than appreciative. Yeah. Uh, again, though, if it's your army and... I don't know, you're looking at like the previews and you can't see how you're going to play that army going forward. It's it's going to be really disheartening for you. Yeah, I mean, I will say like no one likes to have their army nerfed in an edition. But um, when you've been playing for an edition where like your tyrant model can do a 3d6 charge and potentially pump out like 18 mortal wounds to something that he's just yeah. charged into that it's was a bit difficult. excessive <laughs> i know um like a uh, uh, death guard like always seemed to ever since they were first introduced like every edition when it's changed over people have always been completely outraged about the death guard oh, yeah. because and then i think they took out the stuff happens for them. them yeah yeah and i would say that like we haven't seen all the rules for ogres yet. We haven't yeah, seen all the yeah. rules for everything. And even if they are really bad... I was like, keep in mind, GW the... do update rules now. Like, it's mm. not what it used to be of having to wait for the next edition to get playable rules for you. Like... Yeah, it does suck having to wait for the battle tome to come out. Especially if uh, we don't know how soon ogres are going to be, presumably the end of the year at the very earliest if it launches and they're doing really bad in the statistics that they track and everything they will they will alter something yes but even if it's to give like that. one of these once per battle <laughs> things into like a once per battle round or even once per turn type thing yes yeah that would that would probably do something but like i say we haven't actually played no yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't know what's really going on so Let's have a look at the charge phase rule now. So it's pick a friendly unit that charges this turn and pick a visible enemy unit within one inch. So it's just if it charges yeah. um, and then you have that D3 roll again on two plus inflict an amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. Which like reading that, I mean, I'm having a bit of a brain meltdown at the minute is. Does that mean you can only pick one unit that's charged to do that with? No, because it that's... doesn't say once per charge phase. Yeah, so, so it's... every every ogre unit can still do potentially D3 yes. more wounds. So you get right. that, and it's okay, obviously so that, that's less. better than I thought that was <laughs> anyway. But like, yes, it is it's obviously still... less damage. Yeah, it's a considerably less damage. But then when like what we were talking about in the Zinchin one. Almost everything in the game's gone down to this D3 roll now. Yes, yeah, and it does put things on a weird level when some things are supposed to be tremendously more powerful than other things but having I the was, same one. But I always thought it was weird that like the Ogres could do better impact damage than Sons of Behemoth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean... It was, uh, I mean, it was one of the advantages that, I mean, yeah. they, they, they kind of had that kind of uh, uh, charging into combat, doing damage thing before Sons of Behemoth were, like, actually in the game. Um, it's just like, in the, in, the third, in the current book that they have now, like, every ogre can charge in, they can roll the, uh, I think it's the unmodified charge roll mm -hmm. in number of D6 dice. There's means of having that on like a four up for almost every single infantry unit that charges in. Yeah. And that's how many mortal wounds they can do. Then they fight and they hit like freight trains. <laughs> then currently they have a rule at the end of combat they can bite you and do D3 more yes, mortal wounds. Yes. It's like, how much so, damage does this army need to do? <laughs> like, I think we found we found them quite difficult every time we went up against them have, uh, in doubles tournaments. You look so at those saves as well and you think, oh, that's going to be easy to get through. But then it's just like, they have so many wounds as well. Yes, like... <laughs> yeah. So the other two battle traits they've got is this add two to run rolls uh, before you have used Feast on Flesh. Yeah. And uh, that's... I that's Once. nice. You can get up the board really nice and quick with that. Like if, uh, yes, especially like the yeah. first turn. 
you want to be charging in with them, just absolutely stunning the enemy. Um, although, whether it does that with this new rule, I we'll mean, see. Whether they can run and charge with anything's to be seen as well. But uh, I say yeah. first turn or like until you actually use that beast on flesh ability, it's always plus mm -hmm. two to your run roll, so you can potentially get to an objective a bit faster than something else. Yeah, so Feast on Flesh is once per battle at the end of any turn. Um, pick a unit that fought this turn, um, roll a d3 on a 2+, plus, um, heal the target... Uh, sorry, it's, Yes, heal the target equal to the roll, or... Um, pick an enemy unit and inflict an amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. See, when so, I first read this, I thought this was just pretty much, like, for the one, you know, like, one unit in combat. I kind of, like, read it again shortly afterwards and saw, that like, oh, it's, like, the entire yes. army gets this says, if they're in combat. Pick, like. Sorry, I, I don't know if I pronounced this right the first time, because I, I, I did, like, think to myself, did I say pick any? Pick each ogre unit that is in combat. So every unit that is in combat gets to do this. And, you know... I think it's this is only two really good. I was like, it is it is once per battle, but you mm -hmm. can choose when you do it at the end of the turn. Yes, yeah. You it can... is only two or three that you're going to get either healing or uh, well, yeah, but like, more damage. But... Healing yourself two or three and doing two or three damage to everything on the, that you're in combat with. It's pretty. Yes. It's pretty big. It's like a big mm -hmm. swing back in your favour. Yes, there's probably not many things that you're going to wipe out with it, but it's going to just like really kind of uh, shatter units and uh, mm. uh, weaken everyone across the board. But then you see later on that this also has benefits that count as like passive abilities on some units, War Scrolls as well. Hmm. Well, let's have a look anyway, yeah. cause, uh, first of all, the battle formation, uh, the, the beast handlers for obviously the beast claw raiders. So they get plus one to the amount of mortal damage inflicted on the trampling charge. So that's so they're, nice. They're either going to do three or four. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's not, again, it's nothing compared to what they can do now, but mm -hmm. it's still something in addition where everything's moving to a D3 roll. Yes, yeah. So, scaled down a bit from what it was again, but still, nice little buff. Mm. Um, so, you have the uh, the whole kind of things where the uh, Beast Claws, are, are, I think it says that the plot is like, they, they oh, are yeah, constantly they're... being chased by the Everwinter and they're constantly trying to escape it, which uh, I hadn't picked up on that bit of lore before, and I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you have this uh, uh, prayer um, cast on on a uh, 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 prayer yeah, so roll of four. Yeah, on a four, so but you can, you can so store it up to ten with like the uh, prayer mm. kind of counter that you build up from turn to turn if you wanted to. Yeah, so you pick but... a terrain feature within eighteen inches, um, place a blizzard token on it. Um, they gain the obscuring terrain ability, and if it was ten plus, uh, your your guys uh, nearby to it have ward a five up ward while they're in within three inches. I'm gonna have to go back and uh, check the terrain rule thing that we saw recently as well because I can't remember it was obscure. Yeah. Or it was like minus one to hit, or was that just like you you were invisible <sighs> behind it? Or mm, I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll have to look. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's important to note as well, that's within three inches of any terrain features. So yeah. once you turn on the 10 one, that affects all of your ones that you've already put Blizzard tokens on. So you can do that to a bunch of terrain features around the place and just give all your, your ogres um, you, again, that's a, a, a ward save. It's, it's an unlimited one as well, so you can potentially have multiple priests doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you, um, yeah, you can create lots of nice hiding ground and hopefully mm -hmm. give yourself a nice five up ward when you need it most. It's uh... Exactly, exactly. Like if you had just like, say, three 
three priests on the board you get three big bits of terrain in the middle you can kind of make sure that where all the combat is going on you have a mm. ward save active i think that's really nice um yeah moving on we have Kragnos. <laughs> <laughs> and this is interesting um, yeah, Kragnos has definitely been a lot of uh, point of contention for people as well mm. today I mean, a lot of people have said, I don't care for Kratos anyway, so I, I don't care that he's saved, gotten worse. But, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of us out there that own and love the model. Yeah, it's on a four up save now and a five up ward. Now, I will say four up has been, you know, three up has been regular, like fully armoured troops. Kragnos is quite a bit naked so yeah like i can see why a four up they'd want to do but it obviously... was one of those things that like he came out and he had a two up save and mm -hmm. it he is mon he is quite monstrously tough to get through unless it's like doing some good consistent mortal wounds to him yes I, um i kind of thought well, like it would have been if they'd announced Kragnos first, I would have been like, oh, so to like the Annihilators keep their two up save or something. But then Annihilators are like absolutely massively clad in armor with shields, but. Yes, yeah. He does so, retain all of his other little tricks and fun yeah, things. Yeah, I don't know do. how these compare to the other ones. Are they uh, exactly the same? Are there any differences uh, here? There's a couple of different things. Like the, the, the shield one. It's um I think you roll like three D six currently, and if you beat like the what would have been the cast roll for like whatever spell was used against him, it's negated against him. Whereas yeah. now it's just a straight up three plus. Yep, yeah, nice and simple. Uh the Avatar of Destruction one, again, like the giant all of the Sons of Behemoth Mega Gargons have this similar rule, just stopping them from being automatically killed. The only mm. thing is now it's a flat six damage to them, whereas it used to just be like D6 damage that they okay. take. And yeah, you, you mm. can't even try and ward that off apparently either. It's like Yes, yeah. Uh the rampaging destruction one is exactly the same as it is currently, apart from the fact that like it's a two plus and then whatever you've rolled on that two plus is the damage. Currently, okay. it's like currently it's like roll a two plus, then roll a d six. Which again, would be interesting if the giants have that for their impact damage now. Now, was the this one against the, same the one versus against monsters. monsters. Yeah, the one he has against monsters is basically the same as what he has now. It has the potential to be absolutely massive. <laughs> it's like... So, I mean, in theory, like if you best case scenario, you could get a total of like what 36 mortal yeah. wounds to a yeah. monster at a turn yeah and i have seen battle that's reports silly. where that's happened <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it is silly uh i've recently played a game trying to test out my flesh eater courts against kragnos and i specifically did everything i could to make sure that like usher was not charged by kragnos for fear of what that might have done to him it's like... yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> I can see, like, uh, even Archeon has got to be a bit uh, mm. afraid of that. <laughs> and his End of Empire's ability, I think, I want to say that's gone down from an 18-inch aura to a 12-inch aura now. Right, but right. But it is still basically the same that you roll 3d6 now as opposed to... Okay, yeah, so extra charge roll. Um, yep, we have this... Uh, character the uh, Husguard on Stonehorn. I, I, I vaguely know what this model is. I'm not too good at the beast claws. Oh, they, uh, yeah, they are mm -hmm. horrible, horrible things to go up against. <laughs> yeah, but they're really yeah. cool. They're really fun things for a, a ogre's army. Mm. But yeah, they 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 can be buggy, man. <laughs> I seem to remember struggling with these in a game. Um, yeah, so. Basically, passive, yeah. um, you ignore the first damage that's going to be allocated to it in each phase, which is nice, nice. The first damage point, though, it's just like, does that, so, like, you get through 
a flat free damage weapon on him, does that mean he only takes two of that damage? And then I, for the rest. That's that's how I'd interpret it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> again, I mean, I imagine that's probably how it's meant to be. But again, rules mm-hmm. is written, rules is intended. But <laughs> I mean, that's nice, but it's not going to do anything if he goes against an enemy Kragnos. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, I mean, yeah, take these uh, mortal wounds. <laughs> it's um, interesting because I, I think these did have a ward save built into them currently. Whether it's now they're relying on that priest's prayer to give them the five up ward. Yes, yes. So this um, uh, uh, once per turn one, um in the combat phase they've got that that basically um buffs friendly monsters and debuffs uh enemy I, monsters so i had a look at that as well it's um it's yeah. the companion weapons it hits so it's the actual like monsters itself rather than anyone mounted on it which the companions like actually do so much more damage but looking at his table yes anyway, on, on this but... one in particular yeah <laughs> I mean, that's Stohorn's rock hard horns. Like, if that's got two hits on every roll of a six that you make, it's. Uh... Yeah, Ooh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do like the way they're using the companion keyword now to make it different rather than just. In Sigmar, it has tended to be just like, oh, the only way you, you kind of represent a mounted thing is just like a separate attack profile. Yeah. yeah. And and there's a bit more kind of character for um characterful rules they can tie in using this. It was one of those things that you really had to like read your war scroll before because the only way you really saw it was like there was a little section that said mount and it said like this unit's mount is equipped with this weapon and then that's the only way you'd know which one of the weapon profiles on its war scroll was the actual mount's one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Whereas now it's just really nice and clear. Really nice and clear. Yep. So we have the basic Ogre Gluttons here. And they're still pretty tanky on four health. Was that what they had before? Yeah, I think they're yeah. the four at the moment. Yeah, That's what the, I thought, yeah. I say um, each one of them counted as two on objectives before. So the, the control stat for them at the moment does actually reflect what the current thing is anyway yeah they get this insatiable gluttony where they get more control on an objective um mm. Which... i believe they had the um oh what was the name of the the rule before i want to say large and in charge but it's not that it's something like that oh um, uh, yeah it was something like that because like um current edition you only count as one model until you're up to like five wounds Yes. Whether yes. It's, uh, Ogus like surprised me, like when someone said, "Oh yeah, each one of these counts as two. and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." <laughs> so these like they're, they're particularly good as uh, kind of ogres have been in past editions at holding objectives mm. compared to most troops because they start with two, which I think we've seen a lot of things have two. So it's not that rare, but they can then add one to it when they've used their feast on flesh. Which is going to be handy if you've just piled out mortal wounds to yeah. an enemy unit. It's a six-man unit as well, so the article even states mm. that you are going up to, like, control 24. Yes, if you're, uh... yes, if you reinforce him. So, yeah, they seem solid enough. Obviously, like, the losing some of their, their mortal wounds on charging, but... Uh, They've, I could see definite kind of strengths above like other kind of basic troop units that we've seen so far. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I think they will be doing like a lot that, of damage. That five for their up points. saves so deceiving. It's like the it's the wounds in that unit that mm, yes, it's yeah. so hard to get through. It's like <laughs> and me mathing as well. No, yes, eighteen. Yes, three times six is eighteen. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, so the gorges, uh, yeah, I don't know what these are like because obviously they were they were brought out with new models, I believe, in Dawnbringers. The the gorges came out, or were they um, uh, Warcry? Warcry, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, so I don't know what the current ones look like. 
As far as I'm aware, I, I've never really seen like the attack profile or anything for them. Um, it's kind of weird that, I mean, obviously the gluttons have got a bit of armor on them, so that's why they've got a bit more of a save to compare to these yeah. guys. Um, Again, we've got two abilities here on the war scroll that are just no, deep strike. <laughs> use deep strike. <laughs> Like it's starting to feel like deep strike should just be a core rule that they, <laughs> they give things. Like this is really silly now because, okay, it's characterful that like they have anti infantry. They're just coming in crazy and doing all sorts of rend, and it makes sense that they can like kind of sneak up on the foe, I guess. But they do look a bit scary though if they get in against infantry. It's like mm, five yeah, attacks of yeah. peace. With a champion, so like twenty six attacks. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> they, I think at the moment they do have some kind of rule where like the, uh, I think the champion's called like a screamer or something, and he has like the ability to uh, stop a unit from being able to use commands. Yeah, it would be nice if they just had a keyword of like deep strike or whatever, yeah, and yeah. had a, um. An ability that was like more characterful for them. Yeah, it's like that would have been nice. But they, I they like the idea that they're lurking in the shadows. But yeah, it's like there's yeah. probably something a bit better for them than that. Really, it's a yeah, yeah. So that's all of the main rules. Uh, the spearhead ones they give. Um, so your basic kind of. Um, Iron Blasters and Mournfang Pack are, are obviously like too powerful to bring on. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> which again, I was really wondering how they were going to balance that cannon to go into. <laughs> that is, a, it's still quite a nasty army to go against, even with those not coming on till turn three. Uh, especially, um, <sighs> yes, tyrant, the, the yeah. tyrant is going to be on from turn one, and that is pretty terrifying to me. Yeah, you haven't quite got like your super fast moving unit, and you haven't got your across the map shooting unit. But then you yes. do have an across the map shooting unit with the lead belchers. It's mm, yeah, so that's an interesting one. And uh, lead belchers, here we go. So only fifteen inch range, but on spearhead, that's like you're no, gonna yeah, get that's... everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So they can move six, and then they can fire mm. fifteen. So. Yeah, they they got a good threat range for a spear. Yeah, and then if you don't move, you can add one to your hit rolls, which isn't like I believe that's not as good as what they've currently got. Which yeah, is they, like they, they get, get like extra two D three shots instead of D three currently. Ah, but that's it. Yeah. Again, in spearhead, where you haven't got all that attack, getting that plus one to hits actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know that this will be representative of the actual like main game war scroll which i think people have kind of picked out on this one at least in the comments that i read yeah i know like, like oh they're not as good i know like gw i think have already said like kind of weapon profiles are fairly much what they're going to be from spearhead mm. to the main game for you to get like a taste of the rules and then add on to that later on yeah but yeah all these like little abilities on them it's just kind of like I don't know if that's been 100% confirmed, whether that's, like, exactly what they'll have on the full war Yeah, screen. it might be It might be that they get changes, but remember that this is in a spearhead game, and these are on from the first turn, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> they definitely wouldn't want to maybe make them, like, overpowered units in that mode. Um, it could be completely different, but we'll see. So we'll see. As well, like... This is a weird one because I think this is the first spearhead one they've really previewed where models don't start on the board. Yeah. I mean, I, I know they mentioned about the Indrasta one saying that, like, sh her and the Annihilators don't mm -hmm. come on until, like, turn three, the same as this. Yeah, they didn't really give us the actual rules. Like, but yeah, uh, do, rules they, do they not have, like, any kind of, like, flavorful abilities? for the spearhead box is it just literally they don't <laughs> get as many not. things starting on the table <laughs> which i mean like maybe the troops are just like that powerful that it doesn't matter but again i do like everyone likes to have an ability that's flavorful that's like yeah. oh this is my only thing i get to do it whereas this is like 
uh, you don't get to do this. You don't get to play with your toys until turn three. Which it's had... weird. It's weird you don't get anything like the once per game kind of eat on flesh or anything, like a watered down version of that. Or... Yeah. Yeah, that would be I'd, great. It might just be what they've previewed isn't showing that. But... Maybe. Maybe it could be uh, that they're not showing all of it, but it seems, from what we've seen, it seems like every... Um, every spearhead force has one core ability, which is how I think it should be. Um, but, yeah. Nice and simple. So it's, it's a good, it's a good solid box of like solid stat line models. But then, mm. like I keep on every spearhead one they show, I keep going back to like the slips to darkness thing and just yes, going, like, yeah. well, if they can be like that in spearhead, then <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I feel like Slaves to Darkness are going to be the spearhead meta, to be honest. I have not, I've looked around and I can't see that spearhead box in stock anywhere now. <laughs> like it just, surprise, I, surprise. I, whether it's in the, the process of changing the names on the boxes or anything at the moment, I don't know. But Could be, could be. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, other than, I think the only other thing left is the little tantalising teaser that um, Flesh Eater Courts are going to be Friday's article. Yes. So we won't have chance to cover Ooh. that one until uh, after the weekend. Uh, yeah. We're going to UK Gaming Expo. So mm -hmm. if you're there, be sure Come to say hi. Say I will hi. be wearing my channel logo shirt for recognising purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep. So thanks very much for watching. We'll keep up with all the Edge of Sigma news as it comes out. We'd be Bleedy Tree Gaming. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>